As a blind guy, it's really frustrating when something's right there in front of me and I can't see it. I mean, it's, it's right there. How, how can you miss it? Well, because I can't see. Sometimes that happens with the church as well. Spiritual blindness. It happens to all of us. Spiritual blindness. I mean, it's right there in front of us. You can see the fruit. It's right there. The conversion stories, the miraculous things. It's, it's, all, it's all right there. And yet sometimes the church misses it too. Take a look at Fatima. There's a great example. What a debacle. Of, of missing all the messages, the fruit that's there. There's Mary telling us everything we need to know, and we're missing it. And so we go through decades of Russia doing what Russia was doing, and we just we, just, we didn't see it. We didn't hear it. We, we missed it. And some of that's going on right now in places like Garbandal, Spain, and Magigoria, Herzegovina, Bosnia, where Mary is saying all the right things, doing the right things. There are miraculous healings. We've had them here uh, on my podcast, Touched by Heaven. We, we talk about conversion stories. Thousands of men who are now priests because of going to Magigoria. I mean, just fruit at fruit. But we're kind of, nah, I, don't bother me with that. I, I'm busy getting holy with Jesus. I'm looking at Jesus. Don't distract me with that, that Mary stuff, right? So I was talking to Angeline. She lives in Australia. Her parents came back from Magigoria years ago, and they, boy, what happened to the folks? <laughs> they were so changed. It was like, whoa. I mean, they were more loving, caring, prayerful. It's like, and she saw the fruit. And she said, I want some of that. And so she went to Magigoria. And she became part of the fruit too, just further conversion for her. You know, she's there, she's there traveling as a 20-year-old with 50-plusers, but she got something and came back. Her future husband, David, his conversion also came at Magigoria. He was agnostic, and now he was all in. So while back, Ivan, one of the visionaries from Magigoria, was traveling through Australia. And he was at a church, and so they went, and there was confession, then there was the mass, and there was rosary, and then Ivan spoke. Okay, well, during the rosary, something happened to Angeline. And while the visionary Ivan was experiencing Mary, so was Angeline, maybe even a hair before, because suddenly Mary was in the church. She was descending in. So listen to Angeline's story and her encounter. We were all praying the rosary, um, and he, Ivan, was kneeling and facing the altar. And I could see him. I was in the back of the congregation, but I could see him, eyeball him, could see he was praying the rosary too. And we were all praying, and I was praying. And then I had an experience, which was that when it was time for the apparition, it was like this realm of heaven descended. And I had this experience. All I can say to you, it was like a, I don't know if you call this locution. It was both a feeling and a knowing. Uh, she was descending and around her was this heavenly realm. And I've sensed there were angels as well. And this heavenly realm was, when it descended, I was within it and everyone was within it. And our prayer, so I was praying the rosary, all of a sudden the heaviness that we experience, well, we don't even know we're experiencing heaviness, but our prayers, our thoughts, everything's like compared to what it feels like in this realm, this realm is just full of joy and light and every thought is magnified be beautifully. There's no possible sadness. There's no possible darkness. It is the most beautiful feeling around you. So it's just joy and light. Um, and then Our Lady, well, I could see her with my heart. She was like a celestial queen coming down with a mother, mother's heart that is just so big. It just covers the whole world. And she had so much love for us. And the first thought that I had or first prayer was, oh, my God, goodness, I just want to give my whole life to you. It was such an impression that she made. It was like nothing else mattered. I just wanted to go to her. She was just so loving, beautiful, mother, motherly, queen. It's very, very hard to describe, but it was a real sense of her love for all of us. And that lightness was all around me. And... Interestingly, I was looking at Ivan and when it first happened, the descent came, he was looking down and I remember thinking, why isn't he looking up? She's here. I can." And then he looked up. And when Ivan gave his talk afterwards, I distinctly remembered him saying, and he says, at first I don't see her, but I feel her. her. Um, and then when I have that feeling, I then look up and she appears and that's how it happens. And so that confirmed that was like a validation for me that I was I was experiencing that first few moments before she appears to him. 
And for you, you mentioned how you kind of saw her through your heart. Are your eyes open, closed? Whether my eyes were open or closed, it wouldn't wouldn't have mattered. I can't <laughs> even remember. I like that. That's good. Isn't that great? Whether eyes open or closed. So Angeline's all in, obviously, a Magigoria, as is her husband, David. Huge conversion stories. But sometimes there's that pushback. You know, what's this Mary running to Mary? It's all about Mary giving my life to Mary. You know, I look at Jesus, and it's like, wait a minute. The rest of us are going, there's that blindness again. You don't see Jesus there? Did you miss, did you just miss seeing Jesus in all of that and hearing Jesus in all of that? Did you miss that Jesus got to make his own mom? This perfect, perfect woman, one of us, Mary, this this perfect mom, this this mom that's just so nurturing and loving and caring that we want to run to her. He's created this woman that we should run to because she takes us to Jesus. Did you miss it? So I told you about how songs bubble up in my head seemingly out of nowhere, and we know where that nowhere is. Well, the last couple of days, the song, I'm going, why am I getting Bob Dylan? <laughs> I'm getting a Bob Dylan song. Uh, it ain't me, babe. And it's that blind part of the church singing to Mary, go away from my window, leave at your own chosen speed. I'm not the one you want, babe. I'm not the one you need. It ain't me, babe. And it's like, are we missing it? Because what did Angeline say? Eyes open or closed, it didn't matter. This perfect connection between the head and the heart that she could see Mary and she could see Jesus and, and, and she could see the dazzle of what Mary is doing in the world today, in places like Arbindal and Magigoria, these dazzling moments of miracles. We've talked to people with inoperable brain tumors and ongoing migraines, and they're healed, and conversion stories over and over again. What is the one word that Mary boils Magigoria down to? Conversion. It's all, what, Fatima, Garbandal, Magigoria. It's, all, it's always the same word. It's, it's conversion. And the five stones, she reiterates in Magigoria. five stones, what should we be doing every day? Praying our rosary every day, going to confession once a month, going to mass, receiving the Eucharist, fasting, and going to, uh, what's the other one? Oh, and, and, and reading the Bible every day. That's what Mary's all about in all this. And so, ah, never, I don't want those distractions. <laughs> I got my eyes on Jesus. I'm getting holier here. And this takes me back to something a saint said back in the 60s. Let's go to Garbandal, Spain. Mary appeared here to four visionaries, four girls, and, and uh, what happened during those four years of visions, apparitions, oh my gosh, so many miracle stories came out of it, and Eucharistic miracles. The world looked at those visionaries and went, I don't know, I don't know, we're busy looking at Jesus here, you know. And what did, what did St. Padre Pio say? He wrote them a letter. One day he wrote the four a letter and he said, uh, I know the world doesn't believe you, but I believe you. I know what you're saying is true. He said, Blessed Mother Mary appeared to me at nine o'clock this morning and she told me all about it. And then he kind of reiterated something that Mary had said is that in time, people will believe what happened in Garbandal, Spain. People will believe these girls, but by then it's going to be too late. What does that mean? Well, you know, like Fatima, it was too late. By the time the church kind of went, oh, so much harm has been done. In the whole world, it's going to be too late. Conchita was 12 years old when that letter arrived, and at age 16, she traveled to see Padre Pio. She brought a crucifix with her, and he said, Mary, kiss this at Garbandal. Would you like to kiss it? And Padre Pio just kind of smiled and said, here. And he took the crucifix, and he placed it in his left palm, where the wound, because he had the stigmata, one of the wounds. And then he put Conchita's hand on top of the cross, and he blessed them both. Another seal of approval of, I believe you. I believe what you've experienced. And then... The exclamation mark. Shortly before he died in 1968, he was given a preview of a miracle that's going to happen in Magigoria and Garabandal. And also, he made his wishes known that when he died, the veil that was put over his face after he died, he, sent, he wanted that sent to Conchita, and Conchita still has that today. Also, huge Eucharistic miracle. I think it was 62. I think it was. This is where St. Michael the Archangel appeared to Conchita and said, you're going to give notice of a Eucharistic miracle so everybody can be there to watch this. You're going to give a 15-day notice, then it's going to happen, and on July 18th of that year, it did happen. Conchita's out on the streets. She suddenly drops to her knees. She opens her mouth, exposes her tongue, and there was nothing there. And then there was a host, a Eucharistic host, was there on the end of her tongue, for all to see and videotape and take pictures of. You can see this on YouTube as well. I think it was there for something like three minutes because Mary said the Eucharist comes first 
That's what Mary said at Garbandal. The Eucharist comes first, and there's this huge Eucharistic miracle. Is that some kind of trick Conchita played? Go back to Saint Padre Pio and how he was all in on these visions and Conchita. Let's talk about this miracle for a second, this, that this, this sign that Padre Pio was allowed to see before he left this world. And what the visionaries in both Garbandal and Magigore say, basically the same thing in both places, a permanent sign, you assume it's going to be the same or similar kind of sign, a permanent sign that you can't touch but you can take pictures of that will be totally inexplicable, something that's just, and it's just going to stay there. You can look at it, and they say, think of like a rainbow that just doesn't go away. Think of something like that. It's not going to go away. You can take pictures, but you can't touch it. That sign will be for the atheist, they say. Okay? So whether you look at Garbandal, not yet approved by the church, despite all the miraculous things that have happened, and St. Padre Pio's seal of approval, Magigoria, a place where the Pope has sent um, a commission to take a look at everything, and they had no problem with the early visions and all that, still being investigated, but no problem. The commission voted overwhelmingly that they actually believed what was going on early there in 1981 when Mary started appearing to these visionaries, six visionaries. They've given their seal of approval for pilgrimages, and we're going on one in October. But we don't see the attention. Again, we're, not, we're seeing this blindness still out there. So much skepticism out there still, despite the fruit, despite, despite the miracles and, 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 every, and the conversions and, and all of that, we're still kind of stumbling around with our white canes going, huh? I'm, I'm busy looking at Jesus, busy getting holy here, right? So Elizabeth and I, my wife and I, are going to Magigoria. We're going to do this in uh, October. Uh, we're not leading the group. We're just joining one. If you want to join the same week we're going, it's the 5th to the 13th. You can go to this website. We'll, we'll post a link here. Magigoria Pilgrimage dot life and you can see what that trip is all about but we're really looking forward to that but again as we stumble around in the darkness sometimes missing what's right there it's right there in front of me why can't i see this right let's go to prayer let's go to mary who takes us to jesus mary help my blindness heal my blindness in all forms sometimes it's spiritual blindness sometimes there's just fruit all over the place and i i'm so busy looking at jesus i don't see jesus and what he's doing how he sent you to us to be our spiritual mom, our heavenly spiritual mom. Let's run to her because she takes us to Jesus faster than anybody. Help get rid of the lyrics that still may be a part of my heart, those lyrics that say, hey, it ain't me, babe. Go away from my window. Leave at your own chosen speed. I'm not the one you want, babe. I'm not the one you need. She needs us all to open her eyes to her son. See you next week on Men's Morning Light. Oh,